Turkey is one fascinating place full of history and archaeological sites that are so unique and beautiful that it's almost difficult to fathom that they're real. Here, we'll dig into some of the most fascinating and breathtaking historical sites from all around the country so that we can expose you to some of the most important archaeological sites in Turkey. 11. Blue Mosque This incredible place is officially known as Sultan Ahmed Mosque, after the young Sultan who had the mosque built as a reasserting of power by Istanbul after losing the Ottoman Safavid War with Persia. The construction of the mosque began in 1609, and it took until 1617 to complete. And today, it's noted as one of the most iconic sites in Istanbul. Sultan Ahmed I's goal with the mosque was to have it rival the Hagia Sophia, a cathedral also located in Istanbul. And once it was completed, it did just that. The mosque features five giant central domes, eight secondary domes, six minarets, a forecourt with a fountain, 200 stained glass windows in its lower area, and 20,000 ceramic tiles in its upper. The upper area is dominated by the color blue on the tiles and the paint, which is where the mosque draws its nickname from. Poor Ahmed I, unfortunately, passed away just a year after its opening, but at least it still stands today and serves as a place of importance in Turkey and history. 10. Aspendos Theatre In the city of Aspendos, in Turkey's Antalya province, there sits a theatre. This theatre is exceptionally well-preserved and once provided seating for 12,000 people and featured a high stage, which was meant to isolate the audience from everything else, the rest of the world. It was built by Zanon, a Greek architect who was native to Aspendos, and it measured just 315 feet in diameter. It once featured a reflective, sloped wooden ceiling, but considering wood isn't the most durable of materials, it was lost over time. It served as more than just a theater in its lifetime as well, at times acting as an inn for travelers, and at one point, the Seljuk of Rum used it as a small palace. It is still used during the Aspendos International Opera and Ballet Festival throughout the spring and early summer. It's the main reason people visit the area every year, and its importance in understanding the acoustics of ancient theaters is excellent. 9. Alanya Castle This incredible castle sits tucked up on a peninsula in Alanya, which overlooks the Mediterranean Sea and protects the castle from three sides. It is built on the remnants of old fortifications from the Roman and Byzantine eras and rests 820 feet high on the peninsula. And when it was built, it was a purely defensive fortification. Then, when the area became pacified under the Ottoman Empire, a whole bunch of villas were constructed inside the walls. Speaking of walls, the wall which surrounds and protects the castle measures more than 4 miles long and has 140 towers jutting from it. It was mostly built during the 13th century under Aladin Kekubat I after the city's conquest in 1220. Most of the castle is open to the general public, although there are some areas on the seaward side which are ticketed. 8. The Churches of Gorame Now, this isn't what you typically picture when you think of a church. In fact, the churches of Gorame are much, much cooler than any churches we've ever seen. Gorame is a district in Turkey that sits inside the Nevshez province, and it is here where ancient peoples decided to construct their interesting churches. Mount Eltzizez erupted some 2.6 million years ago, and soft rocks were formed from the lava and ash from Eltzizez across a 7,700 square mile area. Wind and water did their work, eroding the rock over time, and left what are called fairy chimneys today. The people of Gorame figured out that the rock forming these chimneys was soft enough to carve churches, monasteries, and homes out of. And that's what they did. The churches were decorated with incredible, unique, colorful frescoes, and the small communities used them as their places of worship. Today, the area is known as the Gorame Open Air Museum and has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1984. 7. Faisalus our next archaeological site was once a Roman and ancient Greek city that was found on the coast of Lucia. It was situated in between what is now Olympos Coastal National Park and the Bay Mountains. And in eastern Lucia, it was the harbor city with the most importance. This is because it served as the center of commerce between places like Egypt, Asia, Phoenicia, and Greece, and it changed hands many times throughout history. At one point, the pirate known as Zikentes gained control of it until he was defeated by the Romans in 77 or 76 BC. It then began to lose its importance starting at around the 3rd century, and by the 15th century, it was basically wholly abandoned. These days, Olombos is a major center for tourism in Turkey, and many flock to experience the outdoor activities in the area. There are even tree houses visitors can stay in, which add to the fun, outdoorsy feel. 6. Mount Nemrut 
Mount Nemrut, or Nemrut, is a mountain in the southeastern part of Turkey that features some remarkable statues that stand at what's assumed to be the tomb of King Antiochus I. The site was erected in the 1st century BC. The statues, which are of lions, eagles, gods of various cultures, and himself, measure between 26 and 30 feet tall, and at one point in time, they were seated. The heads of the statues were removed at some point in time, and they are now found strewn about the site, and it's believed that the damage done was intentional in nature. It is, and has been since 1987, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's not just an important and popular tourist attraction, but an essential part of the history of Turkey as well. 5. Topkapi Palace Once upon a time, in the 15th century, this palace was the administrative headquarters and residence of some of the head Ottoman sultans, but today, it is a large museum. Topkapi can be found in Istanbul, Turkey, and its building started in 1459, which was just six short years after the conquest of Constantinople. Its name means Cannon Gate, but that wasn't given until the 19th century. Initially, it had been called the New Palace, to distinguish it from Bayezid Square's Old Palace. It needed renovation after both the 1509 Constantinople earthquake and the 1655 fire. But starting in the 17th century, the palace began to lose importance, and when the Ottoman Empire ended in 1923, it was transformed into the museum it is today. 4. Perj This ancient city is also known as Perja, and it was once a grand city that served as the capital of Pamphylia Secunda, which is located on what is now the southwestern Mediterranean coast of Turkey, near the city of Antalya. There's an acropolis here that dates back to the Bronze Age, and there are many large ruins located in the area that visitors can see today. The city changed hands numerous times throughout the years, but the Romans, who took control of the city in 188 BC, built most of the structures still seen today. These include ruins of a necropolis, a gymnasium, a public square, Roman baths, churches, temples, and even a theater which could once hold around 15,000 people. There have also been many incredible sculptures discovered here, and beginning in 2003, many priceless mosaics were located around the city. The discoveries of the mosaics have led the city being coined Turkey's second Zeugma, with Zeugma being another famous site in Turkey where incredible mosaics have been found. 3. Hattusa Hattusa was once the great capital city of the Hittite Empire, which can be found near what is Bozkale, Turkey today. The city is one of the greatest and most important ruins of Turkey. Thus, it has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1986. The site was first settled around the 6th millennium BC, and it became a trading post for some time. That is, until the area was claimed by a Hittite-speaking king, who decided that it would make a perfect location for his home and capital for the empire. The king changed the city's name from Hattusha to Hattusa, and he himself adopted the name Hattusili. At the height of the city, it covered nearly 0.7 square miles, and great walls surrounded it. There was an inner city and an outer city, both of which served different purposes, and many different types of structures and historical features can be seen in each today. The Hittite state and the city were destroyed around the same time as the Bronze Age collapsed, around 1200 BC. The city was discovered in 1834 by Charles Texier, a French archaeologist, and one of the most important discoveries made there, the Bazikoy archive, shed much information on the lifestyle, laws, and thinking of the times. 2. Ephesus this ancient Greek city was built on what was once the capital of Arzawa, a political entity and a region located just 1.8 miles from what is now Selçuk in Turkey's Izmir province today. Ionian and Attic Greek colonists built the city during the 10th century BC and at one point was part of the Ionian League. Once the Roman Republic took control of Ephesus in 129 BC, the city really flourished and it gained a decent amount of fame from being so close to one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the Temple of Artemis. Ephesus could have been where the Gospel of John was written, as it was one of the seven churches of Asia named in the Book of Revelation. It very recently became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2015, and it's the most complete Greco-Roman classical city on the planet as of now. Some of the main sites at Ephesus are the Temple of Artemis, the Library of Celsus, a theater with a seating capacity of 25,000, two agoras, a few bathhouses, and several temples. We've seen some incredible archaeological sites so far, and we still have the number one to go. But first, we'd like to ask, what would be your top choice for a place to visit if you ever made it to Turkey? Did it make this list or is it somewhere else entirely? Let us know in the comments down below. 1. Gobekli Tepe Located roughly 7 miles northeast of Urfa, in the southeastern Anatolia region in Turkey, Gobekli Tepe is an archaeological site that translates to Potbelly Hill. 
It is an artificial hill created by generation after generation living in the same place, which causes it to build up over time. This kind of hill is called a tell. The tell measures around 980 feet across and 49 feet tall, and it stands at roughly 2,490 feet above sea level. The site dates back to between the 10th and 8th millennium BC, and it's divided into two phases. One with gigantic T-shaped stone pillars, which are the oldest megaliths on Earth. The other contains much smaller pillars that once stood as polished lime floors inside rectangular rooms. No one really knows precisely what the function of Gebekli Tepe was, although Klaus Schmidt, a German archaeologist, believed that it wasn't a settlement, but a type of sanctuary where people from many regions would gather. It took up until 2018 for it to become a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but that kind of makes some sense because it wasn't even mentioned in any type of research until 1963. If you enjoyed this video, do us a favor and give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out on any of our amazing uploads. And check out this next video we picked out just for you.